Okay, you need to see this. Text morphing. That is crazy. I mean, take a look at how smooth this behaves. And this is from a UI or animation library called Motion Primitives. And while there are already some videos out there, they get very, very quickly outdated because it's made by this dude from France and he's releasing very often, which is for us very awesome. And the even greater thing is that we have a lot of components here built in and they are all about animations. So we have beautiful animations here. So let's get it started. Let's jump right into this library. Okay, Frame of Motion is now motion and change the name. So motion primitives is for motion. So we need to install motion of course to get things working here and lucid react for the icons. That's what you need to do to secure that the components inside of this library are actually working. And all these playful things in this library make the web feel more native. And that's exactly where I want the web to be. I want that the web feels like a mobile device. It feels like an app. It shouldn't feel like mm, I'm going to Amazon and do that stuff on a website. No, it should feel like mm, I'm opening Amazon, the app Amazon. And that's why I like animations because animations give you that mobile feeling. So first things first, I want to be honest with you. I think everything in this library looks awesome. But I want to get to my favorites first, the kind of new components. Because I can't mention every component here, because that will be your job after this video. And the one you saw in the beginning is Text Morph. I don't know, I just love how Text Morph is working. I never saw that in other UI libraries before, and I think this effect is pretty, pretty awesome. The text loop is also pretty cool, so if you want something like that, beautiful templates for, and then things are changing out. There's a big use case for that in a lot of applications. And yeah, in general, these shimmers are also pretty cool. In general, I, I really like the text effects in here. We can find the next effect here at the bottom, Spotlight. And that Spotlight effect here is already quite nice, but I really love the Spotlight Border effect. Implementing this in your application just gives you that, that feeling of something is pretty new and pretty awesome. And I don't know, I, I really love that spotlight effect. So like you get this shiny border uh, if your cursor is in the near distance of that. But with all these animations, I just want to give you a small disclaimer. Because what you need to be aware of when implementing all these animations is don't do too many of them. Because too many animations make your app feel a little bit distracting. I mean, some people don't like animations even. So actually there's a media query for that, a media query which allows people to set a toggle in their Chrome settings, for example. The toggle is named like, I don't want animations or less animations. And then you can implement this with a media query inside of your code and secure that these animations maybe get deactivated when the user has disabled it. So we move on with this animated card background you already saw. I think that's also pretty, pretty awesome. I really love how smooth this background uh, rectangle just moves from the thing I have selected here. I also really like the new dialogue. And yeah, you may think, okay, hey, Toby, a dialogue? That's nothing new because Shetzian has dialogues built in. The cool thing about these dialogues here is they are animated. And I never saw this on dialogues. So if you open that, you see there's a small animation and you even have some with exit animations yeah, right here. So if you close that one, it gets smoothly blended out. And that is so cool. I mean, that's so simple, but so cool. Then I also like this image comparison. I don't know. I saw that a lot of times on the web, but I never saw that in a UI library until here. We have different variations here, like on hover state or yeah, this is kind of a smooth thing. I really like it. And then we also have this magnetic thing, which is like a magnetic button. And the nearer you get to the button, the more magnetic it gets. It's more like a playful thing. So you shouldn't use that on every button in your application, but I think you know that. So how do we apply this actually in our application? Because that's what we want to do, right? Yeah, let's take the text morphing. Let's take this morphing button and let's say I want that. So with all animation libraries or all component libraries, better said, we have this code section where we just can copy and paste the code. But this library has an extra bonus trick here. We have a installation section here on the right and here we find a command. And this is using the Shetzian CLI. If you missed that, Shetzian has a CLI, so Shetzian is more of a foundation right now for other component libraries. Yeah, I sketched something here. So we have Shetzian, the go-to library nowadays, and Shetzian has given us a CLI. So other component libraries, like Motion Primitives, for example, but also other that I presented here on my channel, can implement them and can make their components installable with this CLI. So for example, Motion Primitives here. So let's get back and what we can do now is we just copy that small thing here, npx chatcn add and then the link to this website or to a JSON document better said. And then we can just move into our code and what we can do here is now open the console and just, yeah, just get this going. 
but you need to have Shetzian installed, of course. Now he's asking me use force, use legacy peer depths. If you're confused with this, this is because I use React 19 here and with React 19, Shetzian is not fully available right now or there are still some minor problems. For me, one or both is always working. So we try use force here now. And yeah, he's installing dependencies and created a file. So we can take a look at this. So we got a file now, textmorph, and that is exactly at components UI textmorph. So the same place where the Shetzian components live. And yeah, and now we jump right back in and take a look at the code and we just copy and paste. Let's create a new component here, textmorph button.tsx, and we just copy and paste it. And this path is now wrong. So we just delete it and implement it. And then we can use this textmorph button right here. Text morph button, there it is. We implement it, self-closing, and then we just start the server. And here we have our button. And of course it's working. And it's of course looking great. And that's actually how simple it is. Just use the CLI, get it into your code, and use it. That's it. And one thing I also like about this library, so let's get back into it, is we have some things here that I actually never saw in other libraries. And that's awesome because now we can use this as a yeah, sort of inspiration thing. So for example, spinning text is something pretty cool. I never saw this. I never saw it in a UI library, but I also never saw it actually in a real world project. So, but I think this is an awesome thing. And this is kind of like dynamically adjusting speed. And we always see a table here with the props that a component can accept. And we can yeah just build on top of that. I also really like this disclosure effect because I think I saw this sometimes, but it's actually pretty cool that we have this now in UI animation libraries because things like that take your time like for real this is not that easy but <laughs> i mean now it is so thanks again to ibolik from paris just follow him he's releasing new features very very fast and thank you for watching this video up here you can see another ui library which is pretty pretty awesome thank you for watching have a great new year's eve and a great new year 2025 bye bye